this commission. If God has been good to you, if God has been good to your family, to your destiny, I like you wherever you are, lift up your voice. Lord, I am grateful. For your goodness, I am grateful. For your blessings, I am grateful. For every turn around, for every change of story, for every lifting. Dependable God, I am grateful. Unchangeable God, I am grateful. I cannot take your acts for granted. You have blessed me indeed. You have helped me. You have moved me forward. You have changed my story. I joined the multitude celebrating your acts in this commission for the past 37 years of unending wonders, unending glory, unending progress. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In this special Thanksgiving and impartation service, something unique is coming upon your life. As this commission is set to enter a new face of God's glory and wonders, after this impartation, you will change level. I say again, you will change level. New doors will open for you new dimension of grace will answer in your life. The favor you have never known before will begin to manifest. Make that amen louder. Today, by this impartation, the hand of the God of this commission come upon your life mightily. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Just as God has been wiping away tears from the faces of men, I don't know which secret tears you have been carrying. But I guarantee you today that in this impartation, every secret yes will be converted to open laughter. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. It is my new done era. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard shall be the order of the day in my life. Congratulations. Amen. Put those hands together for the Lord and please be seated. God bless you. Is walking in financial dominion. Walking in financial dominion. And in this service, our focus of teaching is on a grateful heart platform. I like you to understand that before you were born, you were programmed for the blessing. Before you were born. God listed you, programmed you among those that will reflect his blessings. Say, so let us make man in our image after our likeness. And after that scripture say, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. So you are not here on planet earth to enjoy causes. You are here to flourish in the blessing. You are here to do what? Flourish in the blessing. And the reason why God programmed you for the blessing is so that everyone that comes around you must be a partaker of the blessing. That's why he said unto Abraham, 
I will bless you and thou shalt be a blessing. Tell your neighbor you must be. Even though God has said I will bless you until you make up your mind to get committed to being a blessing, promoting and advancing the kingdom, you are not yet going to see it. You are not yet going to see it. So being a blessing requires commitment. You must be committed to be a blessing. Tell your neighbor I must be committed to be a blessing. The essence of the blessing is not to be an oppressor. I used to see one post at those days. Let my enemy live long and see what I will be in the future. You don't need to live long. The blessing is not for revenge. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The blessing is not for oppression. Your enemy does not need to live long to see what you'll be in the future. Do you know why? If your enemy live long, they may fight the blessing. And if God knows that there will be an enemy to the blessing, he will kill them before the blessing. I want to say to you again now, there is nothing to envy anybody for. Because whatever you are envying somebody for is already in your own destiny. It's already in your own destiny. It's already in your own destiny. It's because you are not aware or you are ignorant about it. That's why it makes it look as if that God is favorable to some and not favorable to you. God is favorable to all. This same Lord is good and richly blesses all that calls upon his name. It's favorable to all. The beginning point of you walking into this blessing is what we call a grateful heart. Tell your neighbor you need a grateful heart. I am sure that in your blessing there is overdose of financial fortune. For I alone know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you a future, a hope, and an expected end. Another translation says, for I alone know the thoughts that I think towards you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So God has plans to prosper me. He has plans to prosper you no matter who is angry with you. He has plans to prosper you no matter who is ganging up against you. In fact, the more they gang up, the more sure the thing is coming to pass. And in this life, I have never seen anyone fighting someone from getting blessed that gets blessed. When Satan put it in your heart to fight someone's blessing, you have cancelled your chance of getting blessed. That's why some people will still be poor in church. Because when they see an opportunity that will bless their fellow brother, they begin to fight it. Nobody needs to fall for you to rise. Birds don't collide on the air. Nobody can hinder your shining. why you need a grateful heart. Because what God has prepared for, for A, he has also programmed for B. You need a grateful heart. You need a grateful heart. In fact, a grateful heart is the beginning of you working in financial fortune. 
The reason for a grateful heart is because your own, your own portion. David said, the Lord is the, is the lot of my inheritance. For my portion is with him. The Lord is the lot of my inheritance. For my portion. Say with me, my portion. Your share. Your share is with God. So you need a grateful heart. If you are not grateful for every face that God is taking you, you are a great fool. If you are not grateful, you are what? A great fool. F-O-O-L. Even naturally, there are some people you show favor, you show them kindness. They are not grateful. Instead, they, they pay you back with wickedness. Some of the people you have helped, they are the ones Satan is now using to fight you. When you are in that class, God regrets why he gave that person a chance to be blessed through you. If you are in this church, let me say this now. If God has used someone to help you, if God has used someone to help you, and Satan is putting it in your heart to fight the person that helped you, you may never see good. I'm telling you the truth. Even the blessing that have entered your hand may turn into a curse. People that have helped you are the ones you are now fighting. You can't go far. God will erase people that will also fight you 2,000 times. That's the reason why many are falling down. They are not going forward. They are not making progress. Now, a grateful heart goes with a reflection. Grateful people are thoughtful people. What does it mean to be thoughtful? You sit down, you look at your life. Oh, Father, I thank you for sending this person my way to wipe away my tears. For sending this person my way as such at this time to move me forward, to deliver me from shame, to intervene for me. I thank you. That is the point where someone becomes grateful. If you are not thoughtful, you will not be grateful. Only thoughtful people are grateful people. What men call bad luck is not in the face, it is in the heart. Bad luck is not in the face. It is where? Before you have bad luck, you have a bad heart. Many believers are disqualified for favor, for open doors, for opportunities. Not because winch is following them. Not because forces are diverting the blessings, but because of their bad hearts. Say with me, why? Everybody asks why. why. They have what we call entitlement mentality. Including pastors. Why I say including pastors, have I had encounters with some? I was sharing with my pastors yesterday. One of my pastors, that was in 2005, called me around 11 p.m. sometime. That was in 2005, around April. And pastor, I said, sir, he said, you told me that this place is a flourishing place, that the people, they are, they are well behaved, that they normally give. I said, yes, sir. He said, will you believe that since I came here, 
that nobody has come to bless me. You see, I'm disappointed in these people. That's what we call entitlement mentality. You hear me? If someone comes to bless you, it's not your right. I say it's not your right. God laid it in the heart of the person to come and bless you. Another one that took over from me in Ahoda called me one day said, Pastor, I'm getting tired of this place. Oh. I said, what's the problem? He said, will you believe that this Christmas even a bag of rice Now, I'm saying this now to let you know that this, what we are talking about is not a function of place, it's a function of heart. Heart! Say with me, heart. The same place he's talking about. I stayed 11 months and some days. Take more than seven bags of rice. I'm not talking of ministry rice. Say with me, heart. Be grateful. If you are grateful, you will be full of blessings. You will be full of favor. Don't carry entitlement mentality. Don't they know? You too can't. Don't you know? No man received anything. Say with me anything except it be given to him from above. From where? Above. From above. So when he's coming from above, even though God will use man, you need to be grateful. Say with me, you need to be grateful. One called me one day, can you believe that someone packaged 200 naira in an envelope and came to give me a whole me inside a hole? Meaning I'm bigger than this. If you are too big for a small thing, when big thing come, you will be too small for it. Caution. We need gratitude. We need gratitude. If you lack gratitude, your journey is still very far. Your journey is still very, very far. So no matter how little the thing is, be grateful. Just be thanking God. If you can't thank God for small, you are not qualified for the big. That's the rule of the game. If you can't thank God for small, you are not qualified for the big. What are the things that makes people to be ungrateful? Number one is overqualified for what they are asking for. They overqualified. They are overqualified. They are overqualified for the job. <laughs> every good, every good and perfect gift coming from above, from the Father of Light, in whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of what turning. Anytime you begin to carry an overqualified sense or overqualified mentality, you overrate yourself. You have what we call bloated ego. You overblow your ego now. We are the ones now. If anything should take place here, it should start with us. You'll be so surprised, God will go and start from the back. And hear me? If God brings it to pass for them, he said, it's because I was qualified now. I'm qualified. <laughs> but scripture said, you have not chosen me, but I have what? Chosen you. And blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto his throne. Every time you carry a sense that you are overqualified, you are disqualified. It is God that qualifies you for the blessing. Not your works, not your righteousness. Not my works, not my righteousness.
What is it that makes people to be ungrateful? They are too big for small things. They are too what? They are too big. They overrated. Scripture says, pride goeth before a fall. Maybe you don't know, but God still operates this same principle to it. He will test you with small things to see how you will react. He will test you with small things. I was sharing with pastor, one pastor that was posted to the same place where I was posted before I came. He just stayed about three or four days. He walked up to the senior pastor. When are you going to feature me? Did you hear what I said? He said, when are you going to feature me? The pastor said, don't worry, I will feature you very soon. Before 6 p.m. that day, his letter landed where he will be featured. His letter landed where he'll be what? They took him to one village called Agenagbode. As at that time, Agenagbode has not become a city like now. It's a city now. It's a city now. <laughs> it's a city now, now, as I'm talking now. <laughs> But uh, 15 years ago, it was not a city. So, he says, sir, I only came to ask when I'll be featured. The pastor said, that's where you'll be featured. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, be grateful for small things. Be grateful for small things. If someone gives you small, something small, thank God. Don't react. How can you look at a homie and uh, don't react? Tell your neighbor, don't react. don't react. If you react, it's a sign you are not grateful. You are not grateful. Anytime you feel that you are bigger than what you are getting, God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. God resists what? If God is the one resisting you, you don't need winch. Any man God is resisting, no winch needs to near him. The hand of God is just against him. What is it that makes people ungrateful? They feel insulted that they get less than they expected. This person doesn't know my class. He doesn't know my level. Including God. Oh, the God, if you knew my level, you should have you should have think where now. Yes, they say it to God. You mean not after I've labored? This is what you are giving to me? Lord, I'm not sure you are seeing where. I the Lord search the heart and I examine the ray to reward every man. God is the one searching every heart. Examining every heart. Please check your heart. Ingratitude is a resistor of blessings. It resists blessings from flowing into your life. It's a stopper of open doors. It limits, it limits the flow of the good that comes your way.
And the amazing thing is this, ingratitude is self-imposed. Nobody puts it on you, you put it on yourself. The more ungrateful you are, the more misfortune you see. The more ungrateful you are, the more misfortune you see. What is the meaning of misfortune? You miss the fortune. You miss the fortune. You miss an opportunity. You miss a breakthrough. You miss an open door. Misfortune. Because every open door is to land you into a fortune. But your heart will determine whether you will land into it. Misfortune. So you miss the fortune. So gratitude is a test everyone must pass. In his journey of financial success, financial dominion, gratitude is a test. God is testing you. Any blessing that comes, God is testing you. Every good that enters your hand, God is testing you. Everybody is writing his test. We are writing the test. Even this month, we will write more tests. Every day you are writing the test. God sees every heart before he determines your height. He sees every heart before he determines your height. He sees your heart. You can pretend for me, but can you pretend for God? I may not have access to your heart, but there is omniscience. An omniscience God that sees every heart, that knows what every heart is qualified for or due for. He sees every heart. So a grateful heart is the beginning. Say with me, the beginning. Is the beginning of a lifetime of fortune, much more financial fortune. Though thy beginning be small, thy latter end shall greatly increase. Though thy beginning be small, you are permitted to start small, but you are not permitted to end small. Though thy beginning be small, thy latter end shall greatly increase so if you are small today you will be big tomorrow but you need a grateful heart I remember papa said something in one of the testimonies when mama came to visit the church was around 22 with the way it was shouting vibrating she was thinking that the people they were still somewhere after the service, you now say, where are the people now? He said, can't you see? Can't you see? They are coming. Can't you see the people? They are coming. Just, have they not come? Because the impression she had was a global, worldwide ministry. And they were only 22. And the way the man was vibrating and shouting and sweating, you would think that they are more than 3,000. But God needed to test him with 22 to determine 114, I mean 118, before they moved to 300 plus, little by little. If you cannot thank God for the little you have now, you may not be qualified for the next that is coming. Let the people praise thee, O Lord. Let the people praise thee. He said, Then shall the earth yield forth and increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. He said, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Tell your neighbor, be grateful. He that has begun a good work in you, has God started anything good in you? He that has begun a good work in you, financially, materially, in your career, he says he's faithful. Say with me, faithful. He that has begun a good work in you is faithful. Is faithful to bring it to the end. 
is faithful. And faithful is he that calleth thee, who also will do it. One proof that you are grateful is that there is joy in your heart. There is what? If you lack joy, I pity you. Do you know why? A winch is better than you. Someone can be in church and is frowning for him. Your case is more terrible. You may be angry with pastor. That one is your headache. Pastor is bubbling with life. Mm, like he feels like puff puff. <laughs> Scripture says, with joy shall you draw. If you are joyless, you can't draw nothing. Your name can even be joy. And your face is like chimpanzee. Your neighbor, be joyful. Should I shock you? Nobody is responsible for your joy. Nobody is also responsible for your frowning. You frown, you frown for yourself. Will your bad heart be transferred to me? Thank God. With joy shall you draw. Waters from the wells. Wells, not well. Wells. So you are drawing from many sources. With joy shall you draw. So joy is a spiritual vaccine to cure financial misfortune. Joy is a spiritual vaccine, no? Every day you are moody. No wonder things are always going down. You come to church, you are not even happy. Go back! Go and stay in your coffin. The psalmist said, I was glad when they say, Come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Church is a place where you go and things get better. I was glad. When they say, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Joy is a spiritual vaccine that cures financial misfortune. How? A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a dry spirit crushes the bone. A merry heart. A merry heart. So in your heart, make melody. In your heart, you hear me? If you are not grateful, you can never be joyful. You can never be joyful. Until you are joyful, you are not qualified for the harvest. Until you are joyful, you are not qualified for the harvest. Until you are joyful, you are not due for your own harvest. So the distance between the seed and the harvest is joy. The distance between the seed and the harvest is what? Joy. No wonder the son, uh, Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I said, do what? Do you know that any time you are excited, Satan is angry? That's why he wants you to always do your face like him. Mm. He wants you to always be frowning. Rejoice. Again, I say what? Oh, I love that scripture. I say, and joy is withered from the sons of men. Anytime joy withers, things go. Things wither. Things stay far. Blessings stay far. Favor stay far. Why? 
joyful people provokes divine presence. No wonder a joyful heart will trigger a praiseful life. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for me. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. And I say, thank you, Jesus. So if you are joyful, the next thing that will happen, you will be praiseful. So if you lack a joyful heart, you can draw blessings from God. How much more from man? Joy is our principal access to the presence of God. And hear me, you can't have the presence and lack the blessing. Wherever the presence goes, things follow. Favor follow. Doors open. Opportunities manifest. Ah... Uh, May you not miss it all. Please, I beg you, be grateful. Thank God for what has come. Satan may be pointing to you what has not come, but he has never helped you to bring anyone. The only thing he's helping to do is to remove the one that God has given you. He's only contributing your pain. He has never added to your gain. He may show you reasons why you should not be grateful. But I want to ask you, has Satan given you any blessing? Jesus said the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So anytime he's coming to you, is to steal. And Jerry Sava wrote in one of his books, if Satan can steal your joy, he can't keep your goose. He can't steal it if you didn't open the door for him to thief it. If Satan can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. No one that scripture says, guard your hearts with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your hearts. Guard your heart because you are the container of your joy. You are the container. Nobody is the container. Nobody has the power to make you sad, make you frown, or make you depressed. You are responsible. If you are depressed, you are responsible. And the more depressed you are, the more things are going bad in your life. Any door you open to get worried, troubled, depressed, sad, you are wounding yourself. You are driving God away. Because joyful hearts determine praiseful life. And when you are praiseful, you are perfuming the atmosphere for God to manifest for you. May you not miss it. Yeah. That's why in this impartation, one of the things you need is a joyful heart, a grateful heart. That the next one year will be glorious. You are not even saying amen. Yeah. That the next one year will be more fulfilling. Yeah. I will go before thee. And make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will open before thee the two leaf gates. And thy gates shall not be shut. When God goes ahead of you. Things must follow you. He says surely. Goodness. And mercy shall follow me. Some people just say, why is my life like this, Seth? Your life is like that because you want it like that. Eh? I'm tired of this life. Life say, me too, I don't tire for you. You better do and go so that I can go and rest. Be grateful. Whatever has not come, will come. I say, whatever has not come, will come. It is written in scripture and it came to pass. Something is coming to pass for you. And it what? Came to pass. 
you must come to pass. That problem must come to pass. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. You may be a beggar today, but tomorrow you will be a lender. Amen. You may be eating on the floor, but very soon you will be eating on the table. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Be excited at your level. God is the one changing people's level. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Be excited. Be excited. Be excited. Be excited. So when impartation comes, impartation doesn't answer for people with frowning heart, too. not frowning face. Before you frown your face, you have fried your heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Your face didn't just suddenly frown. Your heart frowned first. You are frowning. The heart has squeezed. Impartation only answers for grateful people. Because impartation releases grace. It releases help. It releases power. So when that impartation comes upon you, the next phase, you will not struggle. This ministry has not struggled. You will not struggle. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. When the impartation comes, it brings for you the marvelous help of God. I tell you the truth. God is the one helping this ministry. God is the one helping this ministry. And Jotam became mighty because he was marvelously helped by the Lord. Was marvelously helped by the Lord. And I love that scripture which you are going to see now. First Chronicle 12, verse 21. First Chronicle 12, verse 21. And they helped David against the band of the rovers. For they were all mighty men of valor. And they were captains in the host. Another place he said, Day by day, God sent men to help David until he became a mighty host. One of the things that will answer for you in this impartation, you will enjoy 24 hours every day marvelous help you will not be stranded if you are saying amen say better amen. amen and Acts 26 verse 22 it say having obtained help of the Lord we continue this day hear me the next one year of your life you will enjoy unstoppable help amen. if you are saying amen say better amen, amen. How can you reach where God has ordained for you if helpers are not showing up for you? They are timely helpers. Timely helpers. Ordained helpers. Destiny helpers. Prepared helpers. You will meet it. Yeah. I say you will meet it. Yeah. The more help you get, the more faster your speed nothing increased speed of accomplishment like what we call divine help and this impartation is going to be for you a transference of divine help and lastly is going to bring about the multiplication and the duplication of the spiritual grace that has brought this commission to where it is paul said i am what i am by the grace of god I am what I am. I am what I am. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Hear me? I don't know the area that you need grace. But that grace is available through this impartation. As this impartation comes upon you, you will not suffer any disgrace again. You will not suffer any setback again. Rise up to your feet. First of all, you are going to pray, Lord, in any way I've murmured against you. 
have mercy on me. I am grateful for what you have done. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I'm grateful for what you have done. Those days we were in the boarding house in secondary school, we used to sing a song. And we had our boarding house master was a brutal, a brutal boarding house master. That was where we learned how to eat hot food. So our tongue was cooler. We used to sing a song, and the moment they finish that song, you have less than five minutes to eat that food. Some have food, but cannot eat. Some can eat, but have no food. We have food, and we can eat. Glory be to God on high. The moment he shouts, Amen. Two minutes more. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm grateful. In one minute. You will do one minute now. But later when you go back home, gather your children. Gather everybody. Be thanking God for where you are. When you thank God for where you are, you are prepared the next place you should be. I want you to thank God for where you are, for the blessings he has given you, for the favor that has come to pass, for every supply, for every help. Lift up your voice. What has not come must come, but thank him for what you, where you are now. I am grateful for every success, for every progress, for every supply, for every provision, for your marvelous help. I thank you. I give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. My great provider. My all sufficient God. My way maker. My dependable helper. The one that supplies all my needs. The God that put food on my table. The God who has not allowed me to beg bread. The God who has not allowed my enemies to rejoice over me. I am grateful. I am grateful, Jesus. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful, ancient of days. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. You are here, you are not born again. Hear me, I announce to you this is one of your most awesome opportunity to enter a new phase of speed, a phase of recovery, a space of restoration. Wherever you are, inside and outside, you want to make it right with Jesus, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are coming, you pray that prayer with me wherever you are. Come quickly right now. You are going to do your own impartation here. In Jesus' mighty name. I am so glad that You pray that prayer with me. God bless you. God bless you. Come, take your, take your Bible. Carry your Bible and come quickly. Jesus loves me. Jesus Come unto you, shall you in no wise cast out. They've accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. As this all rests upon you, I decree today mark a turning point in your life. You will never go down again. Nothing will be able to stop you. Every plan of the wicked targeted against your life, they are swallowed up. If you are saying amen, say better amen.
Put your hands together for Jesus. Just turn and follow me to my right. 